What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. Like I always say, welcome at your first time. If it ain't your first time, please click subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when we post, but we post every single Friday. We don't miss, baby. Got a great announcement. I'm doing more shows. We added so many more dates at andrewsantino.com. We added a late Sunday show uh, in Addison, a.k.a. Dallas. If you're in that area and you're like, it's sold out. It's not. We added one more show. Go grab them tickets, baby. I'm also doing Atlantic City. I'm also doing um, uh, Madison, Wisconsin. We added another show. I'm also doing Nashville, Tennessee. If you live in Nashville in that area, baby, come out and see your boy. I'm doing Boston as well. I'm doing Houston. We're adding all these dates. I'm so excited. Go grab them tickets. But you're in Dallas. If you're around that area in Texas, uh, go grab them. We added that late show at andrewsantino.com. If you're looking for more uh, content from the Whiskey Ginger, go to patreon.com slash whiskeygingerpodcast. That's where I do solo uh, episodes and uh, one-on-one Cheeto chats. Also, if you're looking for merch, it's in the merch bar down below on YouTube or at andrewsantinostore.com. Again, go get them tickets, andrewsantino.com, baby. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75. Gingers, oh hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It's Mr. Tom Segura. Tom Segura, everybody. He's here. Uh, this will probably be his last time ever on the show. He's moving, and it's also because I don't really want you on the show. Yeah. This, uh, really this was like. a favor that I'm doing for you, obviously, yeah. to boost your namesake in the podcast community. Yep. Um, I know you guys did the little exchange with us a couple weeks ago. That on was the, terrible. Yeah. It was really bad. It was very poor. Um, and uh, you're welcome, I guess, is what I should start off by saying. That's true. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. On all accounts. On all the accounts. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I love you. Thank you for coming. You, yeah. You rolled up in a... Uh, can we talk about it? Sure. Yeah. You rolled up in a in a in a Lotus. A Vora GT. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. It was fun, man. But what were you bumping? Because you know I'm a hip hop head, so I was more curious about that than I was about. Because I could hear you, when I hear you coming up, no matter where you are, you're bumping. That's true. Uh, that is uh, "We Are Young," the Jersey Club, Kyle Edwards, DJ Smalls remix. Ooh. See, uh, you have deep cuts. Like you're good with it, huh? Well, I mean, I I'm I I'm get like more into music now. You know what I mean? Like, like, like as you've gotten older, you yeah, feel like you're more into hip hop more, than you ever were. Well, not just hip hop. Like, I've actually expanded. Like, that's like a, that's like a club. Like, almost. It was bump. It was. Like, yeah, yeah. So I got all kinds of shit. I'll now. do EDM. I'll, I'll do a little do it. EDM. I'll fucking do it. Man. I know people say it like it's a bad thing. It used to be a butt of a joke almost. Yeah. Not like it's like cliche, but then you're, once you really listen to it, I'm like, mm, that's pretty good. I'll do that, hip hop. Um, I'll do Latin stuff. Well, that I can, well, that's because you speak brown. Yeah, but I speak yeah. brown, but it's also like, it's just, it's a vibe. Like, I'm not even listening to the shit they're saying. It's like, it's, it's a mood, you know? <laughs> Do you, what if the whole time they're just like, kill Whitey, kill, kill Whitey, kill, White Devil? Kill all the Yankees. What, what? No, seriously, though, because I've heard that, what's the guy's, the most, Jay Balvin. I don't know who Do you know who Jay Balvin is? No. He's huge. Really? In the Latin market, he's like one of the biggest in the world. Don't even know. But I've heard some of his songs in Spanish, and they're bangers yeah man but i have no idea what he's saying yeah i'll i'm gonna fucking listen when we leave j balvin yeah you have to listen i think that's it dude look at we sound like my dad j balvin have you heard j beanie j beanie like but now there's so many new guys coming down the pipeline that like uh, yeah j balvin do you listen to today's hip-hop no nah, dude well it's so vague like what i don't even know what that is that's what's even more weird yeah i don't even know i know i know like future or like roddy rich or like you know the uh, baby the baby yeah I, pump. I know these guys i've heard them but i don't know i couldn't really tell you what they do yeah i'm kind of the same i mean i get like uh, it's like a bad co a comic that's popular that you're like i don't know any of his jokes know. yeah yeah it's kind of like that yeah i i get a couple um you know there'll be like a single because i i i really don't even in hip-hop a lot of times yeah. listen to what's being said well, it's yeah. like the lyrics become like an instrument. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, no, so I totally like do. I'm, and it's like, you know what that song's about? I have no, I've heard no it only idea. a thousand times. I don't know what the song's about. I didn't listen Even to it. Even if I know what it's about, sometimes yeah. I still don't know what that's about. Yeah, that's like true. Like that song, I have a I have a floor mat. My buddy EP bought me a an outdoor floor mat for the patio, uh, a doormat that says, bitch, don't wear no shoes in my house. And that's from 
the Roddy Rich song, The Box. The Box. He's telling her to take her fucking shoes off. Take her Don't bitch, don't wear no shoes in my house. And that's he got me a floor mat that says that. And I re-listened to the song because a friend was like, what, is that? What, what does that mean? I was like, oh, it's in this song. And I put it on on the patio. And as I was listening to the lyrics, I was like, I have no idea what he's talking about. Yeah. But I do like some of the lines. Some of the lines. I mean, I'll tell you like. Uh, uh, Let's run through your fi- your liked songs on Spotify. Well, I was going to I was gonna go to, uh, what's it called? Just things I've downloaded recently. Mm-hmm. Like there's this, uh, well, that's from 2012. That's, uh, what is it? Showbiz and AG. I don't know who. I love AG. AG. Okay. I didn't, oh, I didn't AG is so album. good. Uh, I just got this Pop Smoke track okay so pop smoke is new yeah that's new okay that's legit um i did i did download that that uh they released that fife dog track with red man and yeah uh, yeah you know but it's jay dilla produced like it's i love jay dilla it's like a nostalgia kind of track because it feels like it's from but a lot of that stuff now when they when they're redoing or rehashing a lot of it it's almost like uh it makes me sad because it's gone and you're like well yeah am i gonna keep listening to this probably not but i'll hear it once like do you like drake Truly, I mean, here's the thing. I do I buy do I run out and and like download an album as soon as it comes out? No, no. but I mean, what a dozen hits that like they come on. I'm like, it's a good song. I have man. to listen to. Them. Yeah, like he put out those two new tracks a couple weeks ago or a month ago. I didn't hear them, but <sighs> they're good. He get, he makes hits, dude. But Rick Ross is on it, and anything he Rick Ross is like um, cannabis to me. Remember cannabis? Of course. Like, cannabis was so good on other people's shit. But couldn't make his own album. The craziest thing about the cannabis, the can- my cannabis story, where I'm like, "What's happening?" Hmm. is that Premier made uh, our good friend DJ Premier, our good friend, our, DJ, good friend. our good friend DJ <laughs> Premier, made and I and I brought this up when he did a podcast with me. Yeah, um, he the uh, Devil's Pie, the D'Angelo song. Mm-hmm. That beat is I mean, unreal, the grimiest. It's unreal, meanest, like meanest, darkest, like just gutter. Yeah, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and and uh, you know, Devil's Pie, D'Angelo, did, and, I, and I didn't know this for a while that Primo was in the studio with Cannabis and was like, "How about this beat?" And Cannabis was like, "Nah." And I was like, "But it's like, it sound like if you go, this beat was made for Cannabis." I'd be like, "Oh yeah, I could." Yeah. Def-. He turned it. He was like, "I don't want it." But you hear that all the time. Those guys turn down shit and it gets I, turned into that, something else. But for some reason, that beat. I'm like, "How could he turn that down?" Yeah. And he's like, "I don't know." And he was leaving the studio with, and D'Angelo calls. And he's like, what you we're got? in the other studio. Uh-huh. You got anything? He's like, I got this. And he plays it like over his phone. And, and he's becomes... like, bring that shit over here right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Cannabis is that same way to me of like, he's like Rick Ross. I love Rick Ross, but yeah. I like Rick Ross on mixtapes or on other people's stuff. Yeah. I don't want to listen to a whole Rick Ross album. Yeah, I don't really listen to whole albums. I rarely do now. The last album I listened to in full was probably um, uh, maybe 2 Chains. Hmm. I love Two Chains. Really? Oh, he's so dope. I like him as a dude. I too. like him as a personality. So too. I think that helps me listen it to his does. music. It definitely does. But like, he, I, I like, I just like who he lines himself up with. Like, and and like French Montana. I'm not a huge French Montana fan, but Harry Fraud, I think, is one of the best producers of all time. So when they do stuff together, like those Mac and Cheese albums yep. they did, I, You're I would it. listen to him over and over. Yeah. So that's my thing. Is like if the producer is one of my favorites, and even if the even if the MC is like okay, yeah, I'll listen. To, I'll like eat the whole album. Sure. But no new hip hop to go back. Honestly, I hear it all, but I just don't. Do you do you go? Because I always I'm like, well, I don't want to be like the guy who's, who's like, totally out of touch. Yeah, and yeah. so that's why I I'll seek it out, and I'll I'll be like, what's new? What's hot? And I if try. it's if it's like if it's a it's usually about like the beat. If it's something that you know, I go, oh, this thing fucking slaps. Then, then you're in. I'll get it. But, yeah. Like if not. Okay. What about like Lil Nas X? You know. No. Nah, man. No. <laughs> no man. How many Lils? I mean, are we gonna stop with the Lils? There, but he's so he like talk about being good at reinventing himself. This kid, he comes out. He becomes. He's a, got the like the shit, right? No, like, Lil Nas is the is the kid. Oh, who, li, oh, Lil, oh, you're, Lil you're Nas right, you're X right, is right. the blood I'll, shoes, thinking, yes, the, yes, yes, the, yes. the country song. I like him. Right, I like him. On a horse. I was thinking of see another Lil. I was thinking of like Lil, Lil Zan. Uzi Vert or Lil Zan or Lil something. Zan. He's the one that has the. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's who I was saying. Lil Nas X is a is dope. He, I think he's, he's cool. He's cool. I like. Yeah. Well, I like that he comes out. He makes a non hip hop song. He makes a country song. It yeah. blows up. He's like, also I'm gay. Yeah. And they're like, oh shit. Yeah. And then now he's into his devil play and satanic stuff. And satanic shoes, yeah, and He's yeah. leveling I, up to me. I got... I think the more you keep oh, shifting, yeah. I'm in. And the fact that his Satan shoes prompted, like, senators... So to funny. ...to come out and be like... This is the problem with America. Kids putting blood in their shoes. 
It's it's hilarious. That's what's going to ruin this country. Yeah. Buy guns. More guns. How are you going to come up with now? Now that I think about it, though, how ridiculous is his name? Lil Nas X. Get the fuck out of here. Stolen. Yeah, stolen, mean, stolen, stolen. What, what is that even? <laughs> what is that? He's cool, but that name is crazy when you think about it. But you're allowed it. to. But when we were kids, like you had to have a cool MC name to be prominent yeah. in hip hop. Like yes. you, your name meant so much. But now uh, you, it's like cool to piggyback. Like yeah. Lil became... Lil such a common it's almost like they're piggybacking biting but also paying paying homage to the other Lil's like Lil Kim and yeah, yeah, yeah. it's oh. almost like tipping the hat but it's weird because when we were when we were young if an MC had like a bad name it was part of the reason you didn't like him yeah yeah for like, sure do you remember Boogeyman do you remember Boogeyman no. it's like the trashiest it's like what a garbage you're Boogeyman. a grown up yeah, Boogeyman that's, that's terrible he went after Master Ace they had a battle I wouldn't. I wouldn't want any piece of that. Yeah, it was so stupid. Yeah. But Boogeyman thought he was like, he thought he was. He he was like, I'm gonna rap over your beat, and it's gonna be doper than anything you do. And then Master Ace was like, it's just that's Master Ace did it so right that he put out a diss track on his on his EP. Yeah, like he put it out on the album. That's when you know your heart is shit. When you oh didn't just put God. it out as a separate track, yeah. you're like. This how much I hate you. I'm gonna put it on my actual album, album that's gonna go in stores. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, are you watching the verses? You ever watch the verses stuff? No. What is that? Verses is like it. It was started by um, what's his name? Swiss Beats and mm. I think Timberland. So I think the first one was like, uh, I mean, it was like for fun, right? But it yeah. was like uh, we're we're gonna play back and forth. Like I made this track and mm. like you know, then I finish it. And then you're like, I made this one. Like oh, going through their cool. hits, right? And it was like Swiss beat hits, Timbaland hits. Right. And then it was such a thing. Like people so loved it that they started producing them regularly. So like a week ago or a couple Where's weeks on, ago. Where's this on, by the way? They, they, so they first started putting it on Instagram. Then they, it's on Triller. You yeah, know, I know that, Triller, yeah. And then like they have like their own app for it and Wild. like Versus TV. But on Instagram, these things will get like a few hundred thousand View, live viewers at a time yeah so they just did ghost and ray and so like they sit they sit just like this and then like my track comes on stands up to the camera back they each have a dj what snoop did it with dmx what uh, these are great man how come i haven't seen you gotta these? see them they're they're really and then they end up end up on youtube so you can watch them on youtube later. all right i now i need to check it out on yeah. versus who's the who's the guy that made it I, the guy that i think the concept was was swiss beats and timbaland Right. So they're like the, the they own the the, the T name. Timbaland's the kind of guy where, you, when I look back on how many hits he made, it's almost um, embarrassing that oh he's my not God. he's not a well more well spoken name in the in the game. I don't think a lot of young kids really know no, they know him, but yeah, I don't think they know how many hits he made. It's insane. Like the stuff he handed out to people was crazy. And even if like, I mean, she is, you know, royalty, but like you said, like a kid. I don't think understanding the impact of like those Missy Elliott albums. Oh, uh, come on. Because they're so filthy. Yeah. So ridiculous. The best. Yeah. No, I think kids know it, but they don't. It's just not the same. In the same way, I could be like, Busta Rhymes was unreal when I yeah. was young. And people now would be like, oh, I know that guy, the buff yeah. dude. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, right, yeah, the dude right. that's the yeah. size of a Mack truck. Uh huh. Uh huh. Ah! The last night on, uh, uh, I don't know which one of the shows, The Voice or American Idol or one of the 19 voice shows, Brandy came on. Mm hmm. And my old lady was like, she looks exactly the same. Isn't that insane? And I walked in the fuck room them. and I was like, what the fuck? Fuck them. Black you know people. What I'm you're saying, about. So you're saying black people. Well, what Tom for, is saying right now. for a reason. Right. What is the reason? That they look that good after all these years. Like, did you see Pharrell? I think there's subcontext, by the way, but go ahead. That's Pharrell's fine. like 47. Yeah. And he looks 22. Yeah, I saw a video of Tiffany Haddish uh, at her birthday, or celebrating her Grammy and Common, because th I guess they're dating, like kissed her on the cheek Wait, on this video. Common's dating who? Tiffany Haddish. Wow. I think. Okay, I didn't if, know. I think I've seen them a lot. He of also heard looks it. fucking the same. Another thing that drives me bananas. Uh, Common when age, I was a kid is the age same. Like diarrhea. You look know at that, me right? now. I'm I mean, 37. Most people think I'm 45. Most people think I'm that I've been in my 50s. <laughs> I'm 41. You started in your yeah, 50s. I mean, people are like, I'll say it, and they're like, I yeah. thought when complete, like your first special came out, you were in your 50s. But let's say this: with money and time you've gotten better looking and you've gone the other way. That is, thank you. That always happens though. That's true. I'm a little bit better looking I, than I, I was. I when I first care, started, I, I was take hideous. Care, I take care of myself more. You do. I, take care I thought about you this morning too because I was putting on very fancy moisturizer when I got out of the shower uh -huh. and I was like, this is so lame and I'd be making fun of me, but also I would look uglier if I didn't do it. 
All, I'd be all those really things hideous. that we mock as like, uh, they all benefit you. They work. I mean, of yeah. course. They really do. Yeah. Speaking of which, by the way, I want to talk about this because I, ju- it, I remembered it last night and I laughed about it with my lady. Uh, Common, when I used to live in West Hollywood, Common used to live in su- above like Sunset Plaza because I'd see him there all the time because I used to go get breakfast mm-hmm. over at uh, that little spot right there. And um, one night I was walking uh, to go to Evelie, a bar on Sunset. Path. I left the store and I was walking, just taking a long like walk on Sunset. And there, what's the name of that Chinese place that's right there? That's like, it's like oh, Mao Mao uh, or it's uh, like a- Mr. Re- Chin? No, no, it's like a repeated Mr. name. It's Chow. like Chow Chow or some shit yeah. like that. Chin Chins. Chin Chins. And I walk past and Common is there eating Chinese food by himself. Outside, just outside, by himself, mm-hmm. not on his phone, literally just eating, staring off into space. And I, part of me wanted to stop and be like, yo, I'm, I'm a huge fan. I'm from Chicago. I love yeah. you. But then I kept staring at him as I walked closer, and I thought, God, he must be – eating Chinese food alone is the saddest shit I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Because Chinese food is a shared meal. True. You don't ever, you've never gotten Chinese food by yourself. You can get a sub, a, a, sub, a piece of pizza by yourself. Yeah. You Sushi, can't, for some reason, translates by itself. Sushi. sushi can because yeah. you can sit at the bar alone. Yeah, you can just be like, I'm on the go. I've but got Chinese work. Chinese is like yeah. Chinese is a whole thing. Yeah, because they give you too much. You can't share the rice. You're yeah. alone. It felt really fucked up. Who are you gonna crack the cookie with? Oh God. So I felt bad, and he was sitting there, and then it almost made me Did feel you like go lonely. Like, <laughs> I didn't even I didn't even acknowledge it because I was like, maybe he's going through a tough time. Eating Chinese food alone just felt really I, depressing. I, uh, I nerded out on him once. Yeah, uh, you did. Yeah, at. Uh, so, the improv on Melrose was—I mm-hmm. was, don't know if it's still next stories. Was Fred Siegel? Yeah, they're the, still there. I think the store. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and Fred Siegel, for people who don't know, is just like overpriced regular stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, These it's, jeans are four hundred. It's like, like if like, Nordstrom cost twice as much as it did, or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, it's but like, so the park. So what we do for when you play the when you work at the improv, you park in the in the Fred Siegel lot. Yeah. And so I had an earlier show, and this was like a while ago, and I just walk into Fred, just like killing time. Yeah, you know, I've done gonna, that. I've done that a yeah, thousand. I'm times. not gonna buy anything in the shoe, the little shoe place. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, how much are these? They're like fifteen thousand. I'm like, yeah, cool. I'll cool, just. Man. You got a? Do you have a fourteen? No. Chill. Ah, oh well. I'll go. All right. Um, but I just see him, and he's with a salesperson who clearly does not know who he is. Like, right. just like, because when I see him, I'm like, because <gasps> uh, you know, I just yeah. It was like one of those things where I was Common? that close. Yeah, I was like, Common. And he was like, he was really cool. And she was doing this thing like, how do you know this? You know, like looking at me like, you know this guy? Right. And then uh, Love of My Life had just come out. Oh. So I started just nerding out about it to him. Yeah. And he was really nice. He was like, I saw love and gave me like a hug. And, and I was like, that's the interaction you want. Did he know who you were? No, no, no. This was like when that song came out. That must oh, have been right, like right, right. I was going to say, that's got to be 10 something. years ago. Maybe yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, I just, you know. It was like a like one of those things where I was like, "That's." A and he perfect, was sweet about it. Really sweet. Yeah. Really see, sweet. it's. I always like to hear that. It's also sexier to hear when somebody treats you like fuck shit that you, you man. Yeah, yeah, that I love. Get the fuck away from me, bro! And you're like, I love that. That I like as well. <laughs> I almost like that sometimes more because it's fun when yeah. they fuck you off. Have you been fucked off by someone that you that you like admire? Um, I don't. You know, it doesn't like come to mind. Also, like I, it's pretty rare for me to. Appro- like approach, approach yeah no I, I i'm the same i don't i yeah. i would rather i usually would approach someone that's less famous yeah. than the public would think yeah like i would nerd out on i've talked about him i, I think matt barry do you know who that is he's a british comedian actor mm-hmm. he's to me like i have such a boy crush on him yeah i'm obsessed with him matt barry matt barry he did a show he does a show now called um what we do in the shadows on fx oh i've heard oh you know one of wa- the best shows my wife has watched every episode i'm sure she has because yeah yeah, yeah. i'm sure she's did i walked in on a, cu- well, a couple times her masturbating to it and a couple <laughs> times i was like what is this because she was explaining the show and the um the uh emotional vampire oh yeah 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 yeah. i was like that and i got i watched a couple of scenes i was like that is a brilliant it, the, concept. it's such a funny i mean i've talked about it ad nauseum P- people are probably like shut up but it's so funny to be present day vampires in staten island new york is just a funny pitch yeah i'd buy that immediately and this is um isn't it it's taka watiti's so it was a movie but and then they made it a show the guys Re- from, uh, yeah from flight of the concords yeah yeah, yeah yeah right so they did it together they did the film and then they did this and neither of them are in this. I mean, they do cameo. Yeah. But man, Matt Barry is so what, he, goddamn. He plays funny. one of the vampires. Yes, he's one of the most elegant vampires. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's just, it's just so like, 
it's ridiculous. But anyway, like him, I'd freak out on. If I saw him, I'd I'd be like, dude, yeah. I love you. In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. Hey, you guys and gals and whatever. Uh, I know it's been a little bit of a rough time because of the runes. The runes did us in the wrong way. Not feeling good upstairs. I've been a big proponent on this show of mental health and mental health awareness uh, because I myself have to deal with it and nobody wants to talk about it. It's really weird. It's like your creepy uncle. You're like, we don't talk about Mark. He's a little weird. Uh, but I like to talk about mental health awareness because I believe in it. I think it's important that you get help. And if there's something interfering with your happiness, uh, you really need to do uh, yourself a favor and, and get a little bit of help. Uh, better help is there for you. It's not a crisis line, not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely on the interweb. The best part about this to me that I enjoy um, is that you can do it from the comfort of your own home, the privacy of your own home. And if it's something you're not comfortable sharing with other people, uh, you don't need to, man. You can do it from the comfort of your own house. Uh, all you need is uh, a connection to the interwebs. And you can start communicating with a counselor in under 48 hours. They pair you with someone that they think is going to be great. You don't have to use them, of course. You can change at any time. Um, they're committed to facilitating really great matches for you. And I really am big on this. So uh, it's cheaper than traditional counseling, which I really like, because it's expensive to go to some doctor's office and wait in there and read Highlights magazine and feel uncomfortable because of the, the dim lighting. It's just it's all so strange. Um, and it's nice to be at home uh, and, uh, and get affordable counseling the way that you need it and the way that you, you like it at your own time on your own dime. Uh, so this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. We appreciate them for that. And Whiskey Ginger listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash whiskey. Do yourself a favor. Get a little bit of help. Go to BetterHelp.com slash whiskey. Get 10% off your first month. Hey, you there. Got bush? <laughs> you got a little bit of bush? Is the jungle a growing? Do you not uh, you not clean up the front yard? What's going on over there? You should be using Manscaped. I've talked about them before. I love Manscaped. I've got so many Manscaped products at my house. It's a little ridiculous uh, because uh, it looks like I'm sponsored by them, which I am. And I, that's what I use to trim up. I don't have carpet down there. I have hardwood floors, thanks to Manscaped. I really do love them. Uh, they have great stuff. The No Nick technology, woo! Love it. That skin safe tech is great, man. I haven't nicked one of my nuts in months, months and months and months and months and months since Manscaped has come aboard. Uh, the, these these people have made great products that I really do like because you don't want to shave your face with the same thing you trim up your nuts. You want something else, man. This is the best trimmer in the game. That Essential Lawnmower 3.0, that's what I love, and I use I have three of them all over the crib in different bathrooms depending on where I want to trim up at. Uh, it is really good. It comes with... Uh, that lawnmower, it's waterproof, it's cordless, uh, and it's got a little light on there, so you really get into the nooks and crevices and crannies there of your sack of doodle. Uh, trim the hedges, and also uh, the tree stands up taller. You know what I'm talking about. Make the forest look nice. Uh, the perfect package or the performance package purchase, you're going to get two free gifts. The shed travel bag, $40 value, $39 to be precise. Um, and uh, the patented high performance reduced chafing manscape boxers, which are really nice, man. I really do love their stuff. I highly recommend it. If you're looking to don't go to the store and buy one of those cheap uh, throwaway ones. It's not worth it. You're going to nick and you're going to bleed out. Uh, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code whiskey20 at manscaped.com. Do yourself a favor and always use the right tools for your bush and your trimming experience. You can get 20% off and free shipping with code whiskey20 at manscaped.com. 20% off, free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code whiskey20. It's 2021. And if you still got bush, you need to change that with Manscaped. Ginger. I like gingers. But I've like, done that with, I think it's always like people in music that I've done that to. Yeah. You know, most like, yeah. I'm trying to think like there's actors who I'd, I would be like, oh my God, but I don't know if I, I mean... Because whenever I try with someone who's really famous, um, there is no conversation there. It's really weird. It's almost like J Jim Carrey, who's always was nice to me when he was my boss on the Showtime show. But one time, like you understand the fame level at some point. It's and crazy. It's absurd, it's right? Because we're sitting at Sunset Tower Hotel, and um, I'm having a drink, and I probably had fucking three too many, and I was like, uh, "Where do you live now, Jim? Why?" Yeah. Why would I ask him where yeah, he lives? Well, I mean, what are you going to say, though? I know. I, but like, also, what a dumb... I could have said anything. I could have been like... But see, like, I feel like that's a normal thing to ask. Because you would... No, but it's only like weird... Because you know what his you answer was? What was his answer? I really... I mean, I'm all over the place, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, I don't want to tell you where I live. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm that, all yeah, over the place. It is weird yeah. when this... Like, I don't know if you've had this where, like, I'll be out in a city I'm performing in. Yeah. 
and let's say I go to lunch and someone recognize, hey man, yeah, oh, come to the show. I'm coming to the show tonight. And you're like, oh great. And they're like, where are you staying? And I'm like, uh, at a hotel. And they're like, yeah. which one? And I'm like, what? Don't you think it's weird to ask that? They got their phone out. They're yeah. like, tell me which one. Which one? What side of town are you on? Yeah. Are you staying on the east side again? Because I'll book a room there now. I'm booking it right now. It's I strange. have Marriott points. That will like do when I was I always out. go like, oh, uh, where's the one? And then they're like, what hotel are you at, man? And right I'm here. like, I forget. I, forget, I think dude. it's upstairs. <laughs> it's here. Whenever I was with Rogan on the road, those people, holy shit. Yeah. I don't envy that. They would always see us at the hotel. They would be there before we'd arrive. We'd yeah. get in the car from the airport. We'd get there. They're waiting. I you was know, like, you know what? what I've had? So this past weekend, there were people at the hotel. Where were you? In Omaha. Okay. With things to autograph. Yeah, that's what they do. Yeah, that's what they used to do with like, Joe all the time. I was like, that's so strange. The, oh, the only thing I find stranger is arriving at an airport, and they're at the airport. Scary. And I'm like, what are you doing here? And they're like, oh, will you sign this? I'm like, yeah, but how did you know? How'd you get in? And they're like, well, we just kind of figured. You're they're at the gate. One. They I'm bought like, a ticket just to get to the gate. I'm like, what, dude? You you hang out at the airport? But apparently Joe told me I was ignorant. And Joe said that they make a lot of money on those things. Yeah, so I guess do. they sell them online. They do. Because I would, But I was like, who's buying them, though? I don't know. This is kind of how I feel I about I don't have the, uh, the strong, the no, the strong no. What do you do? You just say Man, yes? Man, well, for autographs, like I, like, I always feel like... You don't go, I got to go? I do. Sometimes I'll go, I can only sign. You yeah. know what happened this weekend, though? Mm. So these guys are at the at the hotel, and they're like, hey, will you sign these? And I go, I, man, okay, I can only sign. And I sign a, a couple things. There's sure. Quote, and the other guy, okay, I, I got to run. I run. The next day, the guy's like, hey, man, those <laughs> those signatures smudged. Could you sign these ones? Oh, my God. So they came back. And, and you like, did, though. You did, because you're nice. Yeah. yeah I yeah, know. Dude. Yeah, you're nice. Yeah. I would be hard to say. No one asked for my autograph, but if they did, I'd be hard to say no. How do you say no? I'm not signing that? Unless you're, in like a, unless you're like, we're going out to dinner, man, yeah. and we're like yeah, leaving. Yeah. I got to go. I guess I would say yes. Joe Joe uh, always said hi to people and did all the things he needed to do, but like when they're at the hotel, it was like, come on, man, I, you're at my hotel. Like I can't sign that yeah. stuff. Because then it's like promoting, hey, come to the yeah, hotel, come to the we'll hotel. sign shit. Yeah, it's got to be crazy for him. But we it's were in Denver crazy. with... And at the same time, so was like Dave Matthews, and, yeah. the, and then like two other big acts were in town, and the amount of people that wait at musicians' buses and stuff, it's it's exhaust. It must like, be exhausting. Hundreds of people. Yeah, I mean, yeah. seriously, it was a line down the block just to wait outside of their bus. That's crazy. But you're like, what? Are, like, but I never understood what do they get out of it? Like you seeing them? Well, uh, in, like maybe walking. Man. I don't know. He's walking. Yeah. I don't know what it is because they're not going to sign because they have to get on the bus. So they just want to like f see that. Like, because when I was a kid and my dad would take me to like a Bulls game, I remember running to the tunnel to like hang out near the tunnel just, ju to, just to reach your hand out. And sometimes, you know, you'd get one cool dude. It was yeah. always like a white, like white Bill Weddington. It was always like an old white guy. Yeah. Who's like, okay, kid. Yeah. yeah. None of the good players. No, no. <laughs> Bill, Bill's like, what? Eating cereal, watching yeah. this. <laughs> But it was never, it was never like, you know, but, but Jordan and those guys, they would never. But also, I remember that feeling, but it was also because I was a kid. Yeah. But you lose that at some point. You do. I do remember seeing this thing back in the 90s where they said, because there was a, it was a photo book that I had bought of just Jordan. Yeah. Like a huge high gloss one. Yeah. Rare Air. I don't remember because that was his rare. book. I bought. I had, it I had wasn't a, his. A couple it was, copies of those. It was. It was done by I think Walter Ios Jr., the the Sports Illustrated photographer. I think that was rare. Was it rare? Look, I got to look it up. But go keep talking. So there's a there's part of it where they show him. They said you know by by ninety seven ninety eight. Yeah. When he was a global like phenomenon. Like yeah. The most iconic person. That when the team bus would pull up to a hotel, you know there would be like they'd have to separate people like thousand people yeah and they said he was always dressed um in a suit and like to like you know like fully dressed to go out yeah and it was to walk you know 12 feet right and sometimes like because other players would be dressed down like more casual stuff of course and they said that it was that it was jordan saying <laughs> by then he you know obviously he's aware of his level of fame yeah he knows that some like the people that are standing there that will forever be their memory of him oh wow So he wants it to be like memorable epic yeah so, like he walked out i mean suit like holding the coat over his arms right. sunglasses and you're, you're like look at this guy but he was aware that that person for the rest of their life will be like 
man, he walked out, looked like that's cool. You know, a million bucks. Oh, that's cool. I don't even know. I don't remember. This just struck this weird old chord in my brain of I don't remember who said it, but somebody famous. I think said it on Carson and an older an older comic maybe had said, always sign your name uh, in full, like always sign all the letters. And it would God, I wish I knew who the story was. And because he got in an argument with another friend who was also famous. Watch, it's like Sinatra, and I don't even remember. But like, they were like, "Why do you sign?" Because I scribble whenever I sign anything, yeah. whether it's a fucking check from the bank. Yeah. Or and he said, "No, you should sign your entire name so they can read it. It's legible." Because if they took the time and had the bravery and the balls to come up to you to ask you for an autograph, you should take the time and have the respect to sign it so they can read it when they go home. Damn. And I was like, damn, that's some old school shit. That is, and I'm not going to do I'm not going to change. I respect it. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, I'm still going to do this fucking limp. I don't know, even know how to sign. Yesterday, we had to do a wire thing for the house. I had to go to the bank and do this wire. And like, she's watching me and Let's she goes, see your autograph. You want to see it? Yeah. What do I want to, where do you want me to write it on? Here, I'll know. get something. Hold on. She's watching me. This woman is watching me do it. And she's like, you have to, uh, she's like, she goes, she says, you know, it has to match the signature that the bank has on file oh, in order those for are the, the wire worst. to be appropriate. Yes. Has to match the signature in order for the wire to be appropriate. So I, in my mind, I'm like, well, I don't remember what signature I gave to the bank. Yeah. What is it? So, and then I literally did it and she goes, sorry, that's not it. And I did it again. She goes, I'm sorry. The other manager had to come over and go, sir, I believe it's your full name that you initially signed when you signed up with this bank fucking whatever ago. But this is my signature now. Oh, look, I'm not going to be able to do it because I'm nervous. <laughs> Hold on. That's my signature now. No. That is what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, it's, so I have no idea what that is. It's just is. an A and an S. Yeah. Okay. But it's not an S. It's a whoop de swoop Let me see it again. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Dude. It, hey. Wait. <laughs> I got to tell you. You're not really giving a lot. No, I. But also, when I sign stuff, when people, when if I, when I used to sell like posters after yeah. shows, I would do these art, these Red Rocket art posters. I would sign that. I would sign it this. I go like that. That. Okay, that's that's closer. David Spade. That's David Spade. That's, that's great. David Spade. You sign. I want to see what yours looks mine, like. Mine. Mine looks more like. By the your, way, this was just a ploy to get this so I could sell this you can after sell the this, show. Yeah. Yeah. This. Uh. Yours. The top one is ridiculous, but that's how I sign checks. If I'm going to sign a check, I have so to. So I have two signatures. Okay, give me both. All right. So they're very similar, but yeah. one is for like official things in which I sign Thomas. And then. Do you really sign Thomas? For like banks and stuff like that. Wow. But, uh, or like, you know, anything that's like a, like that's a legit. document. Yeah, like right. a legal thing. Right, right, right. So. And you've been in a lot of legal trouble lately. Are you ever going to pay back any of those fines? You, you'll end up like Wesley Snipes so in jail. Thomas. Oh, show that to the kids. Segura. Right. That's actually uh, kind of cool looking. Yeah, it's not bad, right? No, it's not bad. I and then this is the this is the um, Tom Segura. Let's see underneath. See, I like that one a lot more. Yeah, that one looks a, a lot cooler. more. It just looks cooler. It's cooler. It's it's a lot cooler. Thank oh, don't, you for don't. this. This is going on the internet. By the way, you guys, click on the link below at buytomsignature.com. I'll be selling this. Starting bids are at 10 Gs, baby. $10, this is a rarity. Wow. Yeah, and all the all the proceeds are going to go to you me. Did, What if you did get like Jim Carrey level famous and mm. this whole and your whole ride up you never autographed anything? And then you're like And the one I'm you did do sign. A couple. That's I'm really sure. that I honestly Jordan, I have an autograph of Jordan uh, on his jersey on the two that's framed at my mom and dad's house. Whoa. Yeah, and which is very funny to me because like my dad is, I was always like, I'm going to start taking this stuff back out to LA. When I was a kid, I used to collect autographs yeah. of a of athletes, specifically only athletes. Sure. And I was like, I'm going to take some of this stuff, like Ryan Sandberg, Walter Payton. Yeah. Um, uh, Jordan. That's when you need them to die. That's all yeah, yeah, yeah. good. My mom goes, my mom goes, you know, he's, you know, he's like not letting you take him on purpose. My dad was like, what's wrong? Why they're cool in this room? And I was like, but they're mine. I want to take them to my house in yeah. LA. He's like, I think you should let him stay here. I got that one reframed anyway. So he's so he, he wants he wants it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I had a Ryan Sandberg That's autograph, cool. and he put it in the basement. I like that. Yeah, and I was like, you stole that from yeah, me. Yeah. He's like, I framed it. So I framed it. Therefore, it's mine. It's mine. Well, it's in his house. But I had so many autographs that are now all over my mom's house. But Jordan. When he signed it, you, you, I have an, a certificate of authenticity, which is like, you know, everyone knows to validate yeah. it, but he would only validate so many signatures per whatever thing he was doing. If it was a charity thing or whatever, he wouldn't, he wouldn't sign 
uh, after so many authenticity signatures or, or, or stamps are dead. Because then he was like, well, that's it for now until I do my next batch. Wow. Because at one point he didn't want too many signatures out there. So that's why I think there's any value to Jordan's signatures. Because there's guys that have probably signed everything. Everything. Yeah, but he was like really weird. He was like a stickler about it for some reason. So I don't even know what that jersey's worth. Somebody tell me. By the way, you can buy this signature of Tom Segura and the jersey at buytomandjordansignatures.com. <laughs> Again, this is starting at ten grand, yeah. and the jersey's starting at six because we know Tom is more popular now than Michael Jordan. I mean, now we're not talking about ninety nine. Well, right now you are. Yeah, easy. you are. Easy. Do you have any? Do you have any aspirations to like if when you make enough money because you've made a lot of money and I'm going to show if you can see right here this is Tom's bank account right here we're going to show that's his number and what he has uh -huh. would you ever buy a sports team if I had that kind of money yeah yes if I had that kind of money you I would. do you do and you might not know it we have okay I have a friend and I'm not going to mention his name because it's not my business to say but he purchased a a sports team of the smaller faction mm -hmm. you know there's a ton of different that's levels true. and I was blown away because I didn't call him out I didn't think of him to be that guy to buy it, to like want to buy a team, but he was like, you no, it's, I mean, wouldn't you have, like, you love sports, right? I, I would. Yeah. At first I thought that was crazy. Like the idea is crazy. Like you just said, you're like, what if I had that kind of money? I remember when I, um, last you, time I went to a Dolphins game, Yeah. they, they had just done like a round of, I don't know, fundraising or sure. financing and in which they got, they sold pieces of it to like select like JLo and, sure. and you know, they're buying like 15 and $20 million pieces in i think uh -huh. and i was like oh that would be this like if if that money is like yeah i can here's yeah $20 that's what i mean and then they're like you are a part owner of an nfl like that would who would be you buy who would you get invested in um i mean in the nfl it's like you know i'm a home i'm a cincinnati hometown and they have the yeah. worst owner in all of the nfl period yeah it's so bad it's embarrassing it would be awesome because hopefully he won't live that much longer right uh -huh. and <laughs> <laughs> um, I would love I would love to be a part, but you know it, that's we're talking. I mean, now the values of these well, teams, it's absurd. Like you read about when um, when what's his name Cuban bought the the Mavs for two hundred fifty five million, mm -hmm. which is an extraordinary amount of money. Yeah, but now, but now it's not worth now. like two or three billion dollars. You know, that's what's so cool about being that rich is that you're like your money make, make, is making so much more money than you could ever make. Yeah, he couldn't make that much money no, anymore. No. no, just by owning a thing makes the money. The mo yeah. Wow, dude, it's the fucked up thing. It's like if you if you make a hundred or two hundred million dollars, yeah, and then you just let the money work, you're, you're good. Yeah, you, you don't, don't need to, to like, do it anymore. You don't have to keep earning. I think if I was going to buy a team, I would want to buy like uh, like my instinct is like buy a Chicago to oh buy into a God. Chicago sports team. Yeah, but then I think I would be so invested in them emotionally because yeah. I'm also financially that it would ruin the team for me. Probably. Do you know what I mean? I yes. would I would become like. Uh, it, w it would only be about the stakes. How dope would it be to bring the Seattle basketball team back? That would be see that to That's me would be something shit. cooler. If they were like we're funding from if I was a, if I was worth you know half a billion and they yeah. were like we're funding we need twenty million yes and to bring back a, the Sonics the so, so cool yeah like I love Seattle yeah same. the NBA would be Sean Kemp the, Gary the Payton dopest. but they would have to play that season yeah yeah and he was like I'm forty eight <laughs> man. Sean Kemp's like, I'm taking care of one of my 19 kids. Yeah. But I could still dunk. The Raid Man still. Give me a bump and I'll dunk. I just watched. I just watched. It was because, you know, when if you watch something on YouTube, it suggests other things. Mm -hmm. it, I watched the slam dunk contest from him. I think it was 90. It's, it feels one? like 92. 92? Or, yeah, yeah, something like Rex that. Rex Chapman, him, a yeah. couple other people. Oh, Kenny Smith was yeah, in Ken, it? Yeah. I forgot that he Jet, was in it. Yeah. And watching, I mean, though, the best is that. So you know how all the players sit around and watch. Love and that was my favorite. Is when they come and they dress up. Yeah, they, and they dress have, up. They have handheld cameras. Yeah, and, <laughs> then, and they always fall on each other, ah! like just like yeah. in black comedy clubs. Why can't we do that? I don't fucking know, man. Whites can't get that excited about anything fun or funny. But the best part was yeah. that so Magic Johnson is courtside and he's like talking to the actual announcers. You know, the like, HIV guy. The HIV guy is yeah. like, hey, I got HIV and I'm here, <laughs> and they go. They're like, what's yeah. going on? He's like, all the players want Sean Kemp. Like, like all the guys are like, we're we're on. Kemp. So whenever Kemp would dunk, they would all just go insane. insane. Yeah, would, and it was the best. Yeah, like watching the the emotion of it was. It's the not best. like that now. Now because now because you can only enter when you're a rookie, right? Yeah. Otherwise, you're not cool anymore. Yeah. Right. And and even still, everyone wants to look so cool. Yeah. That sometimes the dunks are fine. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, look, some guys like Zach Levine was unreal. What he Man. like some of like some of them are dope, but sometimes the competition lacks because I think they're worried about looking cool. To looking the vets. cool, and also they're also like, how many different ways can we dunk this? After a while, I know, right? it's after true. like thirty years, you're but like, but think about it though. You look back at what? What? Look at like when the NBA was falling apart in the '80s when Jordan came aboard and literally revamped the shittiest league on earth. Yeah. The dunks back then were trash. Trash, that's true. So, like, you think what we've come in 40 years, that, you know what I mean? In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Whiskey Ginger fans, have you experienced uh, a, a existential dread, you know? The fear? Uh, or spend an afternoon thinking about cringeworthy thing is, you know, that happened to you five years ago? I know we've all had these moments. We've got our own battles. Uh, you shouldn't go at it alone, okay? Life is not a Rambo movie. You need your squad! You need something to help you out. Luckily, you don't have to curl up in a ball and uh, and cry when you get them scaries or the freakouts. Uh, anxiety can be matched uh, with a lot of other things, but I got to tell you, CBD products can uh, can very much help calm the body and the mind down. I really do love it. Uh, 2021 woes are uh, still making us feel weird, and I'm telling you, uh, this this stuff is great. It's perfect for super moms and students, creatives, party animals, whatever you are, man. Uh, this is going to help you get over that weird, anxious hump that you've got. Uh, it's time to dominate the new year. Scare-free, you know? CBD products I am a big proponent of. Uh, and their uh, their sister, their sister product. <laughs> I'm talking about THC, dude. This doesn't have any THC in it. It's just CBD. Uh, and it's time to get back uh, to, the f to the you that is feeling good and clean and healthy and mentally, you know, a little bit fresher and more balanced. Uh, get 25% off at sundayscaries.com and use that promo code WHISKEY. 25% off at sundayscaries.com with the promo code WHISKEY. 25% off at sundayscaries.com, promo code WHISKEY. Thank you, Sunday Scaries, for making Sundays chill again. Chill out. Real talk, Whiskey Ginger fans. That uh, body wash you're using at the house is shit. It's not worth it. It's disgusting. It's uh, filled with all sorts of harsh chemicals and synthetic detergents it's bad for your skin it's brutal on your skin and body if you're ready to step your game up you got to get that dr squatch baby dr squatch sent me three of their delicious beautiful flavors to try out to rub all over my body in the chower and i gotta tell you wonderful the grapefruit ipa was by far my favorite it smells so good especially on ginger skin look and if it can make ginger skin smell good it's definitely gonna make your skin smell good these soaps are made here in a us of a using the finest ingredients that nature has to offer. All natural cleansers, nourishing ingredients that are actually good for your skin. Stop using that nasty, cheap stuff from the dollar store. Uh, I had it, and I really did like it. The grapefruit made me smell nice and fruity, because that's what I am, nice and fruity. If you want to make it easy on yourself, you can subscribe to Dr. Squatch, just like the hundreds of thousands of other guys out there doing that thing right now. Every month, fresh bars of Squatch soap show up at your door super easy uh they got a full lineup of personal care goods like deodorant and hair care and toothpaste too it's wonderful right now new customers can get 20 percent off of a 20 dollar order or more when they go to drsquatch.com enter the code dsc whiskey that's drsquatch.com promo code dsc whiskey for 20 percent off on orders of 20 dollars or more get clean baby ginger I like gingers. Fucking Kemp even walks cool. He has, he's super pigeon toed. Yeah, but he has like a swag <laughs> he does. to it. He has like a a pigeon toed yeah. swagger. And he's he moves with the ball so unnaturally for a guy who's six ten. Like meaning they're usually clunky, and yeah. he moves like a little point guard. Right. But he's six ten. I know. Two forty, and is doing ridiculous, ridiculous shit, man. The way he would float was so crazy. Yeah. By the way, speaking of that, I know we're doing a lot of sports talk, but I don't really care because I like it a lot. Yeah. Do you think they should change the NBA logo? Do you think they should have made it Kobe? I mean, I get the the uh, yeah. the case for it. Yeah. Sure. I mean, like, it, I, I don't really have, I don't have strong feelings about it. If they were to today be like, we changed it to Kobe, okay, yeah. that's great. I mean, it is, I feel like the, the Jerry West logo is iconic. Like, it's, Same. it's world- you know, recognize. everyone knows it. Yeah, but it's not. I mean, first of all, if they switch it to Kobe, that would be such huge international news. Yeah, that it would be. You know, what would be the symbol be of Kobe? Go ahead, I'm setting you up for a, a good joke here. Just like just chilling like this. You yeah. know? Or 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 a helicopter. What do you think of Ari? <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, no, no. It I should mean, be. And by the way, to me, it should have been Jordan. 
Like, oh, like the, the, the jump man should have been the NBA for course. sure. That should, they should have switched that out so long ago. Of course. But they never would. No, and now it's like he, he would be like, I'm suing you for adopting my logo. Yeah, hundred. well, dude, so. he's so money hungry. I mean, yeah. I've, I, I, so he opened up a new golf course, and, you know, I'm a, I'm a big golf freak, and, like, he opened it up so he wanted the convenience level through the roof. So everything is, like, tip top. If you order a drink, first of all, he think drink girls, most country clubs don't have drink carts. You have a shack or a station. Yeah at the turn or whatever, or there's a bar, but they don't allow drink girls on country clubs or nice courses. But he was like, I don't really love the idea of shacks either out there, like a drink shack. So you order and they drone you drinks. Have you seen this online? No. Dude, it's fucking at unreal. His course? Yes. You, so when you- Where, Where's the course? In Florida. You, you, you dial up you know, uh, the clubhouse and you can order on an app and all that shit. And literally there's video online. They drone you your drinks out to the tea box that you're at. And then it drones back, fucks off right back. No way. Yeah, dude. But, so, but like very Jordan. Cause I know guys that have played with him or played with, you know, gambled with those guys. And, and Jordan is so sneaky about the way he gambles. Cause he's uh, an addict and, uh, he'll gamble everyone he plays with for different amounts because he knows no one can handle it anymore. Because for years, apparently, he used to be like, 10 grand a hole. And some guys playing would be like, I can't, I can't do that. I can't do that. I wor- I, they're like, I work I in I'm bucks, fucking middle man. management. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But now he'll be like, okay, Tom, uh, you know, I know what you do for a living. He's like, I'll bet you like 100 a hole. And then another guy will be like, I'll bet you 10 grand. And then you, he has different side bets going with everybody. And apparently, he's uh, very quick to charge you. Like, like the moment you're done, you owe me. He's like, go to your car and get your checkbook, and then we'll sit down and have a drink. (laughs) You're like, aren't you worth ninety billion dollars? Yeah, I mean, even in that thing, that Last Dance, there was that moment where one of the lesser known players, he was like, he's like, he came over to play cards, and he won. Oh, on the on the yeah, I remember that. Yeah, he took my money, and then he like the player was like, hey man, like why you know why do you want to get mine? Cause you know, like you, you're rich as fuck yeah. and I'm not. And, and it was, I'm paraphrasing, but it was something like, yeah, but now you know, I got your money in my pocket. Ugh. I was like, damn. Yeah. Because he, because he, for him at some point, and I've met a few guys like this and you probably know these people too. When you have too much or you, when you have more, th- uh, more than enough money, more money than you'd ever need, money has literally no meaning to them other than holding it against somebody or yeah. like how much or like how or like what could i use it for to get better than you that's all it really is it's yeah. not like well for him it's like the the whole thing of like you know i just beat you at something yeah i got your ass yeah yeah so you and the like money the, he could burn yeah i don't care by the way that. how gangster if he's like thank you and thank you man he's one just of lit it on fire like, <laughs> um by the way I, i'm not this whole cigar thing that's running around town everyone now who did i just see like Burr showed up to a thing for cigars for yeah. Josh Adam Myers and for cigars, man. Dean, are you into this shit? I mean, I have everyone's some cigars, getting into it, now. but I don't. I don't smoke that often. Well, see, I still drink. Those guys all don't drink. Like Burr doesn't drink anymore. at all. Burr doesn't drink. No. no, he stopped drinking. Josh is sober. You know, like a lot of these guys that I see now, so many guys are not use not drinking. So they supplement by having a a, a cigar. Stogie. Yeah, yeah. I like it, but I'm I'm also like a. Personally, for me, it's like once in a while. I like yeah. it at night. Like I have friends that smoke cigars in the morning. I'm like, nah. What? Like, that's, yeah. What are they retired? That's cigars a, and coffee. They're like it's the best. Uh, like, no. Yeah. But I did used to smoke I cigarettes do like and coffee it with like whiskey or bourbon. Really? I like having a cigar, but yeah. I mean, I'm doing it like I said. I mean, I don't do it even once a month. Right. It's very rare. Yeah, it's rare. But Christina smokes every day. She smokes a pack and a half a day. Really? Yeah. A pack and a half of cigars a day? Yeah. I didn't know they sell them in packs. That's they do. wild. Well, it's like, I guess it's a, a box. A box. A yeah. box and a half a day. A box and a half a day. Are you, uh, Are you? this is a really harsh question to ask, but do you love her anymore? I used to. Yeah. 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 Because it just feels like, it feels like there's love there, but I don't know where. Yeah. No. I mean, I just, I mean, there's, I have love. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have it. But it's like, oh, there's also a lot of guys that are nice. Do you think you'd ever make the switch? I've, I've, I have. Right. Already. You have? Yeah. Who would be the, who would be the first guy you would date in comedy? If you, if like you're wake up, you're like, I think I'm gay now. Who's the first guy you date? Um, Jesselnick. 
Oh my god. Or I would go with like a I would go he's too good looking. Yeah, you know? he's handsome. I would go with like a little like who's a little more homely? Yeah. Well, you Bert is an obvious choice, but <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't want disgusting. <laughs> You know, who's a ho- who's kind of homely, Bobby, but, but like gross, repulsive, absolutely, just would have and a bad partner. Isn't it crazy sure. that somebody lays down with him? With both of those guys? Yeah, it's honestly sh- it's shocking. And also, by the way, um, Bobby's girlfriend is gorgeous. Yeah, doesn't so make like, any sense. If she was ugly, she's got mental problems, obviously. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I, I because to be with him it would take same with Leanne. Well, but Leanne. Um. Yeah, well, but with Leanne, at least like um. No, she's got head injuries. She. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She oh. got dropped on the head as a kid. Oh, she got wow. hit in the head with like a baseball. Is that bat. why she has an accent? Yeah. Right, because she's from because she's from like she's from Long Island. Long Island, right? Yeah, yeah she's from she's New York. Like, hey, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time anybody does that, I just think of Theo. Now, when I, yeah. I met my buddy saw Theo for the first time. He came to the show that we were at, and he was like, he's like, is the accent is that real or is that fake? I was like, that's a very funny question. Yeah. I was like, no, he's from the South. Yeah. It's just like, a, it's, it's it's accentuated in his act. All but, the Boston guys are like that. Oh, yeah. If you're from Boston, you speak one way, and then you perform dialed up. Right. The moment they get on stage, yeah. it becomes very Bostonian. Yes. But I don't, you because we're from the Midwest, we don't sound like anything. No. Until you meet somebody who goes, oh, no, you have an accent. You're like, what are you talking about? Yeah, no. You know what the funniest is? There's a, I can't even do it, which is uh, upsetting. But there's a very distinct Miami accent an english speaking miami accent i was just gonna say spanish always oh yeah so if you speak like a guy from miami they have a really telling like dave williamson has it i don't know who that is the comedian Uh -uh. no so he he tours a lot he tours a lot with uh with bert but it's like it's really notable and when you're in miami and you speak the way we do they go no you haven't you're like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about okay well i don't like when someone says like you sound like you're from california i was like that's not What's that's not accent? even a real thing. What's the accent? The only thing that's very California is when people are this way. Like when people oh, are like Valley. Valley? Yeah. Valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's very obvious. Yeah. But how come Christina's from here? She never got that shit. Yeah, I think because she was like a goth girl and not like hated the uh, the Valley girls. <laughs> I wish so. I could have seen her in high school be goth girl shit. Oh, my God. The photos are amazing. Did she? But I mean, like, I want to see, hair, see her hair, in person. Black yeah, hair, yeah, yeah. Trench coat shit. Yeah. <laughs> Like yeah. all the rings and all that. Bro, shit. when I met her, I met her. She was wearing fishnets, knee-high boots, yeah. leather skirt. And you miss that, don't you? Fuck yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, you look like such a whore. <laughs> what happened? Now you look like someone yeah, I, I like. Oh, I, I care about my kids. And yeah, she's like, I'm a fan. She's like, I really am trying to be a wholesome person. But deep down yeah. inside, yeah, she's got the fishnets oh, somewhere. They're, they're there. Do you ever wear stuff for her? I mean, I'll wear her clothes. I'll wear mm-hmm. her underwear, you know, <laughs> like I'll put on her stuff. Yeah, you will. And I'll be like, does this turn you on, you know? And she's like, yeah, of course. She'll walk out. <laughs> Do you get to a point where you, you'll, you have you tried some weird fucked up shit with each other? Have you gotten comfortable to be like, you know what? We're old enough. We'll try. I'll try anything. I mean, I will. I I, I think yeah. I, I don't think we go like super crazy, you know, right. like vacuums and pumps and stuff see that like, i want to try toys i mean i, I fuck around with toys, toys are cool sure. i want to try the one where you s- put them in a bag and you suck all the air out of it <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> that is cool. hot dude dude i saw i saw <laughs> a guy put a chick in that like and it you know it's like a latex suit yeah. and then he lowered her into a hole in the ground covered it put a rug over it and sat in a chair Shut i was up. like oh my god <laughs> like the panic that person must feel <laughs> There was a there was a dude there was a dude on TikTok who God I wish I knew who it was so I could promote him. He does a bit with his girlfriend girlfriend or wife or whatever, where like <laughs> you know how you can like take someone's comment put it on the video and then answer it in the next video mm-hmm. and he was like the next one was like when are you gonna let her out and and he's like eating an apple in his front porch and he's like maybe today and then he goes inside. And he opens up underneath the sink, like underneath where his sink is. And she's, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He, yeah. He opens up the sink. He grabs a uh, detergent and then opens up the dishwasher. She's in the dishwasher, like tied up. And hey. she's and she's like, huh, huh. And, and he goes, no, not today. And then closes it. I was like, oh, my God. Man. For her to be in on it. And people, because obviously the comments are like, yeah. this is fucked up. This yeah. is human trafficking. This yeah. is torture. But it's like, do you really think someone would post that 50 vi- 15 not. videos like that? I mean, it just. But it's sometimes fascinating. The humor goes right over people's heads. Totally, she's in on it. Obviously, she's in on it. But it's also fascinating what gets people going. I love that. Like I could talk yeah. about kinks 
all day because yeah. I think it's fat that like there are people who that, like nothing excites them more than the idea of somebody in a latex suit in a dishwasher tied up. You know what <laughs> I mean? Know, and then the other guy. person's also like, and I love that too. See like, that I don't understand. I don't like understand. the do, like the domination thing. Like we I watched we watched a special about that about dominatrixes and stuff. And like I get why the woman likes the power yeah. uh, thing, but when the guy's getting his balls stepped on and getting kicked in the face, stepped on what ball, is it? Stepped on balls, I don't get. No. Handing over control, I understand. Sure, but yeah. getting like hit and stuff, yeah, I don't understand I mean, the physical punch me. I don't want to get punched or anything either. But no, I've, or spit on me. That's a, the one. This one eh, girl was like. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm I know you do like that. I'm Beat in. me, piss me, spit on. But I just think there's a weird moment of. Well, now this is psychologically abusive. And obviously it's because of I psychological think, abuse. Yeah, yeah, that could be a part of it. Right. I think if, you, if you're handing over control, see, there's a thing, for, I think, where when, with the doms, too, it's like yeah. if the guy, if the woman is, at least in his eyes, gorgeous, like beautiful, right. then whatever she wants to do is right pleasing to receive. Sure, because it's like, I'm, yeah, it's like, it's like, it's got, I mean, they go by goddess, you know? So right. Like, well, that, that's like, a, have you ever seen my, um, the, Thousand Pound Sisters or whatever. Have you seen that show? I'm obsessed. It's like my favorite show. Where her face is so fat that like you're like, is she Asian? Like, <laughs> it's not, dude. It's, it's changing. It's one of the best shows the on bone Earth. structure of her face. Yeah, she, a different. She's a different human. But how cool you can keep transforming as time goes on. That is pretty cool. Yeah, you just lose some weight. You get to be a different <laughs> person every ten years. Yeah, that that shit. She oh she one of the bigger girl has a boyfriend. This this black dude Jerry who's got to be who's got to be 150 pounds wet. You know what I mean? Like yeah. as skinny as a rail. Yeah. And like, okay, let's let's go over the few things that first comes to my mind. Black dudes like big girls. <laughs> but man, some of them like... Just blanket statement. Black dudes like big girls. All my black friends, every black friend I've ever had... Not even friend, person who ever lived. Every black human who I know likes big girls. <laughs> no. But, but, but right away you're like, all right, A, this guy's got the dick for it probably. Because you can't get through all that fat. You can't. You can't. I can't. Dude, I'm I'm medium at best. I mean, I was with a girl in college who was thicky, thicky, thick. Just a little thick. And yeah. I was like, oh, that's in. She's like, that's my butt cheeks. Like, oh. <laughs> that's like, really why when someone's like, why don't white guys like big girls? Like, because we can't get in. That's yeah. we're not big enough. Yeah. Right. But then I thought, this girl is a super size. They call her SSBBW. She says that on the show. Super size, big, big, beautiful woman. And there's a whole category of guys that are into SSBBWs. So, super size. Super size. So A, it's because, and that's yes, a reference to McDonald's. A, it's because they can get it because they're 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 long enough. And B, I think they like the challenge. The challenge of getting it in? Of just like or how hard that. is it to have sex with someone that's that big? Oh man. And I'm yeah. not and I'm not fat shaming. I'm saying that is work. That's that gotta be work. crazy hard. Do you think your life would be totally different, going a totally different direction if you had a ten inch dick? Yeah, hundred percent. I yeah. wouldn't be a comedian. That's yeah. We were just yeah. talking about this. Yeah. No, I wouldn't be a comic at all. I'd probably just be like a guy who works a normal job. Yeah. Just like Target, I'd probably be a checkout guy at Target. Yeah. There's a guy that's at at my grocery store down the street from my house. Big Dick. Big Dick. Yeah. I can feel it. <laughs> yeah. He's a sweet guy. You know what I mean? He's a checkout guy. Yeah. He's, and he's kind of handsome. He's like kind of a good looking guy. He's probably in his mid forties. And then you know, there's a piece of you that goes, "Well, is this a job he wants to do or he has to do?" And then I thought. Maybe he did other jobs earlier in his life that fucking sucked, yeah. and his boss was a dick, and he was like, I don't need this fucking bullshit from you. I have a big dick. It, I'll go beep dick. groceries. And if you are... Sometimes I think about this because um, the business we're in, ultimately, it is like an unhealthy... It's, disgu- you know? it's repulsive. And, and we're always, always like... we're You're never satisfied. No. It's never enough. No. You're never like... Oh, cool. This is what I do. Like, you're always like, what about the next thing, though? What about, yeah. like, I need a show. And yeah, you never go, this will do. Yeah, no. It's no. always like, so it's it's not it's not good for you, right. you know? But then I go, how great is it to be somebody with any, any like, regular job who goes, I'm perfectly content. This yeah. Is, like, that's a great place to be in. It is. But who? But what would you do if you weren't doing this? But do I have the 10-inch dick? Yeah. Yeah, probably Target. Target. Yeah. Or check out somewhere. Somewhere where, like, when I leave, I don't have to think about it. Yeah, we would definitely not do comedy. No. I think I, I'm going to... Uh, it's suffice to say, I'm going to put it out there. Every guy in comedy has a small penis. Or smallish penis. How about that? Or is unaware that it's not small if it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. Actually, I found out that I found out how medium penis I am, and it made me so happy, like, in, in high school. Like, high school was when you find out if you have a small penis, a big penis, or a medium penis. Yeah. 
and it was nice because I played sports. And then you see other penises, see and you go, dicks, yeah. okay, bigger, bigger, smaller, same, same, smaller, same. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I had a lot of, I had two pro athletes that I played sports. Yeah, dude, my high school bo- like uh, pushed out pro athletes. Wow, two Big brothers dicks. that both played in the NFL. Big dicks. I mean, absurd. You knew that they knew, but you also at some point, and I was the first one to make a joke about it. I'd be like, put on, you wear, wear a towel. Like, yeah. he would walk around after we showered and chat with people. Yeah. Be like, yo, where are you going tonight? And you're like, come on, will ya? Yeah. Same, same, same. I showered with clothes on. Had, we did too. Yeah. And, and there was a guy who would also, showers are done. Yeah. And he had a, he had a thigh slapper. Yeah. And he would just go around and be like, oh, did you guys see? And we're like, dude, come on. He's like, and yo, that last it, play. And you're like. Banging, it's banging on his thigh. That's... And we're like. All right, man. By the way, this is this is there's male etiquette to to bathroom stuff that women don't have to worry about. Was when you walk in yesterday. I was walking. I was in the urinal. I took the furthest one, and of course, a guy went just one too close to me. But there was one right next to the sink that he could have taken. And it's impossible to not look as a guy if you're if you're finishing to turn. You're gonna see it. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna see it, and I saw it, and it was huge. And I was Huge. like, he wanted me to see it. He wanted you. He got yeah. close for you to see it. He wanted me to see it. Yeah. And so what did I do to him? I pulled mine back out and I go, are you happy now? Yeah. Fine. And, and I put it back put it away. Back I put it right back into my balls where it Don't goes. Don't you hate when you're at a urinal mm-hmm. and you feel like you don't have like good like length at, Force? at the moment? Oh, length. You know what yeah. I mean? And you're like, oh, I'm just going to like, just in case someone walks in, I'm going to give it a little tug right now. Oh, I shake. Yeah, I'll do yeah. a little, little waggle around. Like, let's, let's get a little blood going. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I pe- what I do is I pull up the head and I smack it. Yeah, I'll you just pull it up that and you hard? smack. Wow. Yeah, right wow. underneath. Just get it going. Yeah, it'll start to really move and get thick. Yeah, that's yeah, a good move. That's a good tactic. Man. <laughs> I don't know. I did. I'll take it back. Some guys in comedy are probably built well, but I got to tell you, not uh, not. I mean, it's not, not, not the majority. No, it's no definitely, way. It's definitely the minority. It's definitely the minority. Speaking of which, uh, Tom is doing shows for minorities. Uh, you're doing Spanish-speaking only shows. You're doing yeah. POC shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, are whites allowed to go? They can. You don't prefer them. We don't them. prefer it. Right. I understand that. Will yeah. you sell? Are ticket prices higher for whites? Af- after you get seated, we do a collection. Right. Uh, at the. White do you know how tables. fun that would be? Honestly, yeah. I would fucking love to do. Do you know that in today's world, every, uh, everybody would be like, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying though. That's yeah. how fucked up we are. That like, I would love. To do a show where black people have a ticket price, that's one. <laughs> Latin people have a ticket yeah. price. That's Asian one. people. And white people have to pay like a super premium. Yeah, and they're like, as soon as you're like, if you're white, you walk in, they're like, and it's $500. And they're like, what? <laughs> but so you know, whites are show? like, well, we'll put it on the card. I mean, it is worth the show. I just, geez. We love hey. Tom. Well, we went to Japan. We used to call it WPT, it was white people tax. A lot of places that we went to in Japan would have, they have, they have, they have called, what's called tourist tax. Really? Yes, yeah. A lot of places will put have tourist tax. Have you been in Japan a lot? Them. Twice. How great is it? I mean, the greatest place on planet Earth. I mean, really? I can't, I literally can't say I enough. really want to go. I'm obsessed. I want to go today. I want to go back. Uh, it's, uh, it, that's on my, like, when people go, what, your bucket list stuff. I it's, really it's genuinely go. one of the coolest times of my entire life. I could gush about it for like, for hours and hours of like, it, dude, honestly. You know with your wife? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I know. Wanted to go with my boyfriend, but she wouldn't let me lose and her. Plus, there's so many Japanese girls. It's like, what are you doing? That was stupid of you. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. Japanese guys to me are hotter than Japanese girls. They're beautiful. Yeah. Those those boys are so soft. It's yeah. unbelievable, dude. Yeah. You get a nice 25-year-old Japanese boy who works in like computer analytics or something. Yeah. He's out at the bar late because he's worried and stressed about what's going on the yeah. next day. Mm-hmm. You take him home, you know, back to the Intercontinental. Oh, my God. I haven't thought about it or anything, but it's just How long did you I stay when you do. went each time? Japan was probably a couple of weeks. Wow. You can't do trip. less than a week. Yeah, you can't. It's, it's absurd. Well, because also it's like... You want to do Tokyo, then you want to do southern Japan. We flew to a little island called Ishigake, which is in the Okinawan island chains, because I wanted to like feel that difference, because they say like the islands are off, off the coast are totally... It's like not... It didn't feel like Japan. It felt like, a, it felt like just a Pacific island place that wasn't connected to, to Japan. It was, wow, the culture was different. The language they say is different. They also hate Japanese people. They do? They're not a fan of mainland because wow. I guess Okinawan chain during the war was used as like their dumping sites for whatever they needed, right? Yeah. The military kind of occupied and just really ruined everything down there. So they're, it's not that they don't like them. I just think they, they feel, they feel how Northern California feels about Southern California. Yeah. Where you're like, yeah, we're the same place, but we're fucking not. Dude, I remember when I was in Hong Kong, yeah. they had, just because, you know, island and there's bridges connecting to other parts yeah they're like oh yeah this part of the island hates that part of the island just like we're talking yeah. like a mile 
bridge. Oh, dude, totally. Yeah. But it's but it's it's the same as to say like, uh, it's the same as to say like people from Wisconsin hate people from Illinois sometimes. Like just because we're just because we have this weird dumb rivalry of like yeah. you're there and I'm there. It yeah. means nothing. It means not, yeah. What do you mean? Even closer to home, North Side Chicago Cubs, South Side White Sox. Why do we hate it? There's no. I was just born there. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. I just. But do I hate them? Yeah. 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 Of course. It's just like it's built into my DNA. I, who, who are you? Which, which I'm a Cubs. I'm a North Sider. You're a North Sider. Yeah. So like I don't like the White Sox. I think yeah. boo boo fart. You know, boo boo fart. Boo boo fart to them. That's what I say when I go. But yeah. I've also been. But yeah, no. Japan, honestly, uh, go. Honest. I would say that to anybody. I would rather go back to Japan than I would go to visit some countries for the first time because. It, it was just so endlessly beautiful and cool. And like the creepy thing when you get out of a tube stop or get, a, get out of a train stop, no matter where you're getting off in Tokyo, feels like the center of Tokyo. That's how fucking big and dense it is. And like like people just. It's everywhere. dude. Yeah. It feels everywhere you go feels like a it feels like a fucking Christopher Nolan movie. Where That's like, a place where where for 20 years people yeah. wear masks. You know yeah, I mean? dude, isn't that funny that we they wear masks all, for all the, rest the time? Of, yeah, all the time. All the time. And we go there and we're like, "What's up, with that guy? What is he sick? What a fucking weirdo! What's up, what dude? That? Take it off, man!" Yeah. And now we're it's gonna over. be wearing it forever. Yeah, <laughs> it's over. Yeah, that, somebody said that. Uh, who, who, who said they were in uh, Texas? And well, Texas never really fucked with the virus. They were like, "We're we're good." But they said they were walking around. Somebody goes, "Take that off, man! It's over." He's dude. He, look, he, you know yeah. what? He feels that way. Are you proud to be a Texan now? It's gonna be a thing. I will be a Texan very soon. No, but I mean, are you going to get a driver's license and do all that shit? Oh, yeah. You are? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You are, huh? Oh, yeah. I'm going all in. Really? Yeah, man. I'm building a studio, doing the whole thing. But I mean, like, uh, this is forever home now, Texas? I don't know. I don't know. With like, I was used to moving a lot. You know, we moved a lot yeah. when I was a kid. And I've lived here way longer than I've lived. I've lived here 19 years. Yeah. And so... It's the longest I've lived anywhere. I didn't think we would be leaving ever. Right. I bought a house last year here. Yeah. And, you know, we it's had a it. dump. I've seen it. It's a yeah, dump. It's a dump. It's a but fucking I, dump. We moved. To, we uh, <laughs> mapped out everything for like school for the, you know, like everything was ready to go. Right. And the thing is, you're married like, you know, so much of like the like the 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 vibe of your house is, you know, how as a couple. Right. And like, how, yeah. so like. Christine, the idea of my wife leaving Los Angeles, I'd be like, you're out of your mind. She's an Angelino. Like, right, she's born and raised here. She's fucking, she's been here forever. So, and she's always had this attitude of like, LA or go fuck yourself, you know? Yeah, so that's I was why like, I like her. That's why you go like, oh, this would never change. And then as it came up and we started talking about it, at first when I was like, you know, mm. do you cons like, consider it, blah, blah, blah. And usually these things with a couple, it's like one person's kind of leading and the other person, is, you know? And then she surpassed me. And that's when I knew we were doing it because right. she would wake up and start talking about, I was like, okay. And then I would be the one who was like, really, are we really going to move? Yeah. And it, when it was, it started the other way. And as she kept being like all the reasons why she wants to move there, like it got me even more on board. Yeah. Um, and now I'm like, look, the thing that I, I'll be honest, like the most about it are two things. I love the fact that I have zero state income tax. It's huge. And I love the fact that I basically, for the most part, in a non-pandemic year, I am on the road all the time. Yeah, I, I know. I tour constantly. And touring from, like, more more or less the center of the country versus the southwest corner. Yeah, L.A. is a gun in my mouth. I, I hate traveling from here. I will say that. Dude, so I, 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 sometimes, sometimes, I am learning to just be like, I don't want to go to LAX so bad. Yeah. So bad, I'll stop out of Burbank. Yeah. Because I just don't care. It's because I'm like, this is such a gun in my mouth. I'd rather just sit on a plane and get to another city and have another drink or watch another movie yeah. than fucking go down there and want to murder myself. It's it's a nightmare. I mean, and like I said, you know, that has been for me a regular thing now for fourteen. Yeah, over a decade. Years. Yeah. yeah fuck. It's just it's exhausting. And I start at, like, with both equations. I start doing the cumulative number. In other words, right. It's not what you save in a year in taxes. It's like what do you save in ten years? Totally. It's not the time you save uh, a year of six and five hour flights. It's what is that over ten years? It probably yeah. adds up to a year of your life on a plane. It's at least. You know? Oh god. So, now because now, now my flights are like two and a half, three hours. Right. Which feels like nothing. Three hours at most. Yeah, it feels like nothing when you do that. Right. When you go to New York from down there, it's way easier. You go to New York from here, 
It's like, I'll see you in a week. Dude, yes. I always feel like when someone's like, when are you getting to New York? I'm like, tomorrow, but not. I mean, I'll see yeah, you Yeah, I need a couple days to recover. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So I'm going in a fucking time machine. Yeah. it's It feels like... Tra- it's, so it's, I mean, it's exciting, man. I actually, no, I'm, I'm excited very, for yeah. you guys. It is it is cool. I would dare you to not see Rogan or talk to him the whole time that you're there. That'd be hilarious. How and funny. Then, you guys move there for... I feel like... And then in like 2030, I'm like, do you live here too? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen what he's doing down there? His club and all that shit? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty incredible, huh? Yeah fucking wild i mean good good building rebuilding the universe i mean it's just got it's it has to be somewhere it's it's cool if that place becomes an epicenter of comedy i know so many people moving there yeah i can't no we just bought this house and i i have almost no money Welcome so at this life. point i can't yeah. do it i just gotta like you know the only way is if you know no, I yeah, it'd be so hard. It'd be so hard to do. Also, you know, I've got the podcast with Noodles, and like, what am I going to do with that? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's not, he can't leave here. Dude, it would be awesome if you moved there mm. and just started it with just any Korean guy, <laughs> like a random <laughs> Korean guy. Yeah. And it was just bad for, and you never said anything. Yeah. And, it would piss him and off. You so just much. got to know him on the podcast. And it became a huge hit. They're like, these guys are the shit. We, I just steal the, I steal everything from the studio. Everything. It's all like, bad friend stuff. Yeah. And you, do you mind if I call you Bob? He's like, okay. <laughs> He's like, fine for me. All right. Uh, yeah, no, we're, we can't go anywhere. We'll be probably, and Bert's going to stay. He is going to stay, but we ha- I mean, I'm keeping my LA office for a while. Yeah. And then, uh, like I said, I'm back all the time, man. Yeah, you'll be back. And yeah. also, we, we might move back. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, see, that's what I think. I think more people will move back than not. I think yeah. there's people that don't. That are moving there for a temporary. Like I, I feel like I, I say that because I'm being realistic. Then mm-hmm. you might just miss it and be like, "I'm coming back." I do like it here. As soon as we can get back to fucking feeling somewhat human. Although, dude, I went out the other night for a friend's birthday to go meet up with them and and say hi, and uh, people were just getting shit faced, partying like it was the old days. So I feel like a part of it's, you know, it's gonna get back. Are you vaxxed, by the way? No, but I have antibodies because I had it. Me too. Yeah. I, I know. got tested for antibodies this week. Are we supposed to get vaxxed if we have the antibodies? Not stuff? if you have antibodies. Like now, it changed. Like some people who have had it don't yeah. have antibodies. Any, like after a, sh- a shorter period of time, it just depends person to person. I got to go get tested again for antibodies, but I think I still have them because they said it's at least antibodies six are better than a vaccination. The vax, yeah. I know. And also, a lot of people don't know this that whether it's a vaccination or antibodies. In either case, you can still get it. Yeah. You can still carry. Yeah. You can still spread. Totally. It's just about lowering your symptoms. And and the risk level of what you would incur. Yes. If you were going to get it, Moderna, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson. Well. I want J&J. I want one shot and take I want me one out. shot, but it's, apparently that has the lowest what efficacy. Good. So that's what you want. Fuck yeah. Low, low. You Give me low. low. dose. Yeah, low dose, baby. Yeah. Yeah, like when I smoke weed, I don't need high percentage anymore. Just give me a little one. Just, just let me, me coast. Yeah. My buddy EP said that. He was like, <laughs> he's like, because I said, which one do you want to get? He goes, oh, man, don't you know, like, black dudes, we're not, we're waiting for the Johnson & Johnson. I was like, why? He's like, don't you don't you know, man? It's like, what do you mean? He's like, you know, we don't, we don't trust Pfizer, Moderna. I don't, I don't trust that shit. He's like, Johnson Johnson is a name I know. I was yeah. like, really? Is that like a thing? He's like, every black person I speak to is waiting for Johnson & Johnson. That's so, just because they're familiar with the name. <laughs> I guess, dude. I mean, he's speaking very like uh, heavily about every black person. But I was also yeah. like, you know, it's a funny joke. I'm sure that's I'd not never true. Heard, like, there, I always felt like... There but was I a, get it, because I Johnson Johnson, I'm like, I like that. I mean, I... Yeah, I always felt like... No more tears, baby. You know, let's say you go back a couple years before this shit started. Yeah. You bring up vaccinations, and for the most part, I feel like... I mean, there's always been an a anti-vax sure. group... But in the, in this year, the the number of people who anti-vax are, it's way higher. Yeah, it's way higher. Well, because misinformation is really is huge, it's right? Huge, but and the fact that it's accelerated. I think that totally. made a lot, that made people who are actually in medicine question it because they're like, "This is so fast." It is weird to hear doctors go, "Well, you know, we're we're finding out. We don't know everything." Yeah, like, and you're like, "Well, what the fuck is that even?" Dude, mean? I know a, a bunch of people in healthcare. Who told me they're not? They're, they're like, I'm like, what are you talking about? And I know like, someone that, yeah, I know someone on a personal level that's close to us that didn't get it and works in healthcare. And I was like, you're not going to get it? And they were like, no. I was yeah. like, what? Yeah. Are we? But it's like, but they were like, you should get it. Right. And you're like, wait, why should I do it? 
But also, I think they're exposed to way more than we all, than we are. Their whole life is exposure to germs and true. Like if that's your whole life, you know, it's like you. It's like you and Christina. You expose her, you, each other to so much stuff. Yes. On a constant basis. Yes. You're pretty in, pretty much impervious to anything. Yeah. You guys didn't even get sick when you got the virus. When uh, I got COVID. Yeah. No, I got sick. You did. But just a couple of days. Right. It was, two it days. Was, it was gnarly. Couple. I mean, it was. I never had a fever, which was same. Like, but I had like real aches and I was exhausted. Do you mean, have foggy I, thing? The foggy brain? I was just so tired that I couldn't do. Like I just slept. I just slept. I had a. I had this like um, this Alzheimer'sy thing. Like really? she was saying that I was punching her in the middle of the night. Ah. I was like, I don't remember any of that. You probably said something stupid. That's right. Yeah. COVID took care of what I couldn't take care of. Yeah. Can watch you your, imagine that's a symptom? They're just like, you might forget hitting hitting your significant other. You might knock their teeth out, and it's yeah. not your fault. So I've been having COVID for about five years with yeah, her, boy. Yeah, a lot of COVID, man. <laughs> uh, well, dude, I um, my heart is with you and the family as you go over there. I can't wait to see you when I go down there, and swim, we'll swim naked at uh, Lake Travis. Yep. Oh, what's it called over there? Barton Springs. It's a nude beach. Oh, yeah, they pull your tits out. You can pull your tits out. Yeah. You can't pull your penis out, apparently. Because I did, and they freaked out. Why can't you pull your dick out? Well, they pulled their boobs out, and right. I and I had my penis out, and people were, you know, kids are crying, and people are screaming and running away, and I'm like, it doesn't make sense. I'll change that. I think, <laughs> I'll change that. I think penis and boobs are one and the same. They totally are. First of all, what are you doing with your boobs if you don't want a penis on them? In, in them, them. Uh, th in, in them, on them. them. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So we'll go, we'll go naked swimming in Barton Springs. Um, I want to go look at your car right now. So. Uh, Thank you for doing this. It's, yeah, it's good to fine. see you it's once again. Um, we end the episode with one word or one phrase. Those are fresh. What are those, by the way? Um, Man, you always have nice kicks. What size to. shoe are you? Ten and a half. Damn, I was going to say, give me some shoes that you don't wear. What do you wear? I'm a 12 or 12 and a half. You, oh, you, the, you vary between sizes? Some shoes I'm a 12, some I'm a 12 and a half. I yeah. don't know why. Like yeah. Nikes, I'm always... What about dress shoes? Don't you go down in, in dress In shoes? high heels? High heels, I'm a half yeah. up. Like, You're a half up? Yeah, like if in my... Um, in my stilettos. Uh, in my stilettos, I'm always like a 13. Wow. Well, my toes are big, so when I wear high heels, I have to have more wiggle room. Yeah. But um, yeah, when I wear sneakers, like these sneaks are 12, but then if I wear Nikes, I got to be 12 and a half. Oh, okay. Something about the 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 little kids that made it, like their hands. I think sometimes they fuck up when they're making the shoes. They do. They do. And there's a thing you can pay. Yeah. It's I don't know if it's on the app. It might be on the site. You can pay to find out who fucked up on the on your shoes on the Nike app. And if app? you pay, if you pay extra, they'll hurt them. Oh, they will. Yeah. How? F by the way, that it has. And they'll been send proposed. you a picture like yeah. here's a bruise. You know, the Chinese government at one point was like, "This is not a bad idea. This is a pretty cool idea." <laughs> This is what Americans are good at is good ideas. Also, speaking of which, I heard the Chinese government, they're like trying to investigate them to find out that they knew two months before the virus was spreading that they could have told us, but they refused not to. Wasn't the... Two months? They said that the, the, the what is it, NSA or somebody was like, oh, this was definitely lab produced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They and, said it was lab leaked. Yeah. But we have the sister lab here in South Carolina. You know that, right? Mm -mm. Their Wuhan lab, we have a sister lab here. So they, they had communicated about what what they were working on like this shit is dope this shit is fire wait till it gets out by the way zero cases in south carolina you know they were just like you know, like we're out of here fuck that <laughs> this shit is fire wait till this fuck it that's a, a chinese guy with a, a southern accent <laughs> he's working between both wait till this shit gets out dude here's all i know yeah the world's a pretty cool place man <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna walk off camera you give me one word or one phrase this is uh your segura goodbye up for who knows how long so Make it really count, man. Okay. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers.